Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna install Slackware Linux. I've got all kind of websites here to look at and you can get to most of them, if, if not all of them, from just right here. But if you look up Slackware on DistroWatch, you'll see it's an independent distribution based on Linux and its country of origin is in the United States. All right, so <laughs> they've been around a long time and they have a lot of information available, a lot of different ways you can go. Here, we'll start off here. This is beginner's guide and it, you'll have to Google this uh, for Google. I'll make sure the uh, link gets in the show notes or probably as titles down at the bottom. And then we got install. This is straight from the other site there from here. Slackware install. Installation help tells you how to partition your disk, set them up, set up programs. Here, add, rem add remove, delete, disable users. Here we got uh, telling you about your root directory, how to set up a network if you need to, the X Windows configuration system initial in <laughs> initialization. And package management. Speaking of package management, they use Slack PKG or Slack package as their package handler. And here's the source to get the information about how it, how it works and how to use it. Here we got adding multi-lib capability to Slackware. Now, if you're going to run Slackware and you need something like OBS Studio, or if you need something like VirtualBox, you scroll down right here, you'll see. Uh, these programs right here will require them. Wine, VirtualBox, and that's the one I'll be trying to install. Steam, Skype, Citrix, Citrix Client. They all need multi-lib libraries in order to function correctly. And some of them won't even open without it. So you can... Slack, Slackware does have a... It's not really a, a GUI. A, it's a GUI, but it's a, here it says command line and dialogue-based tool to synchronize with the slackbuilds.org. And it's sort of, I don't even know what to really describe it to. It's a really good package. We'll look at it here. And if you're interested in SBOPKG, it's a, it's a software that lets you compile things that are not in the regular repositories. Here's where you'd go to get that. And this is their homepage. If you just do a Google on SBO PKG, you'll find it. Click on the downloads here. And you look right here and it says the pre-built, the latest version. Click here. So if you click here, it'll download it to whatever folder or directory you tell it to. And then it tells you right here how to install it. So install PKG. Maybe we'll get to that, I hope. Here's a a how-to on administration upgrade and the reason why this is important here is if you ever upgrade your kernel it's not like the system will run uh make in its cpio or any of that stuff grub config you'll have to do that yourself so you'll need to know how to either stop your kernel from upgrading or what to do if you want to upgrade your kernel and like i said this link will get in the description I found this link right here, and it's a it's basically an online PDF. And just click up here on the upper right in Firefox, and it says download, and you'll download this PDF. It's basically a history of Slackware. And it says right here it was derived from Software Landing Systems (SLS). Slackware is probably the first fork. July sixteenth, uh oh, July sixteenth, nineteen ninety three. July 16th, version 1.0. <laughs> All right, so let me close that out. We're going to bring up my virtual box. Okay, so you'll see two that set up here. This one's already installed, and I'll show you the difference between that install and this install. Both of them use XFCE, but there's a big difference in the install, the package selection that you'll make. 
So I got this one set up here. They all, they both have eight gigs of RAM, two cores of the processor. Did not enable the EFI. Video memory is all the way up, and I'm using the stock graphics controller. All right, let me click get started here. This is going to take a minute. I might have to make two two uh, we'll say Control C to get in scaled mode here, so we can read that a little better. Keep it in the middle. Uh, so basically it's telling you that if you have any kernel parameters, extra parameters that you need to set, right here you would enter those. This example right here is device SDA1 is the Linux partition. We don't need to do that. We're just going to press enter. All right, so now it's going to load the system. Okay, so the first thing you're going to be presented with is selecting your keyboard. It defaults to US. So if you're in the US or want to use a US keyboard, just press enter here. It says to select a different keyboard map, please enter one now. Well, we don't need to do that, so we're just going to press enter. Here it's giving you instructions that once you prepare the disk for Linux type setup, so it's telling you right off the bat you need to partition your disk and up in the middle of the screen there it says CF disk or F disk. One thing I like to do is run a list block device. Oh I gotta sign in as root. <laughs> I typed in it as BOK and it logged me in. <laughs> so you could probably just hit enter there. So we got SDA. That's right. Alright so let me clear that screen. We're gonna say CF disk Hyphen Z, it'll do that part anyway. Device SDA. We're going to use DOS partition label. Free space. We're going to get, I gave it 8 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to give it 8 gigabytes of swap. Primary type of swap. Press enter. Arrow down to get the free space. All right, so now we got a 61 gig hard drive available. I'm going to give 32 gigs. To the uh, root partition and we'll need to make this bootable so use your arrow key and press enter on bootable all right arrow key down one to get the free space we're good with that primary and we're ready so let's write this out gonna have you uh, type in the word yes and we're ready to quit all right so the instruction said type in set up Okay, scanning our, our system for those partitions. If you're not sure what to do at this point or just want some good ideas, you can enter help here. Key map, if we're not using a US, we, or we need to hit uh, change it here. Otherwise, pass that up. Now we're going to add that swap space that we created and it, and it correctly selected SDA1. And we're not going to do any sector checking especially on a hard drive, a virtual box. Okay, so there's our, our uh, FS tab for our swap. The next partition it says is SDA2. We're going to do that. We're not going to do any bad block checking. Format it to EXT4. And the next one is SDA3. And we're going to format that EXT4. And we're going to have to mount it to slash home because at this point it don't know what to do with it. And there's our Etsy FS tab. Press OK. Now, if you're booting up to a USB stick, select that one. If you're booting up to a, in the virtual box, select CD or DVD. I'll show you. You can see right here, it's picking that up as an optical drive or DVD. So that's where it's, where it's at for me. I'm going to press Enter and I'm going to let it automatically scan for that CDD. And it found it. Okay, so here is the, one of the biggest things. I'm going to install the XFCE desktop. By the way, I scrolled to the bottom. And by default, XFCE is already ticked on. Well, I want all of this stuff, but if you'll notice now, there's KDE that will also get installed. I'm going to untick that. And I'll show you the differences once we get set up here. So we got base Linux system, various applications, program development. GNU Emacs, Fact List, uh, Linux Kernel Source, Bypassing KDE, 
and system libraries, networking, text typesetting, etc. Even the games. So we'll press enter here and we're going to do a full install. And this was going to take a minute. <laughs> so while that's running, let me bring up my virtual box. This one that I've already got installed here, it I, I used KDE and XFCE, and you'll see the differences when we do boot back into this. But for now, I'm going to have to pause the video because this is going to take about 10 minutes probably. But I'll be back. Okay, so I'm going to come back. I wanted to show that one screen right there that I mentioned in Linux Torvalds, and it also uh, was saying it was installing in a set. It installs as sets building on top of each other. All right. Okay, I'm going to come back now. It was just installing all the XFCE stuff, and just like that, it's done. Here you have the option to make a USB Linux boot stick, and I have not done that yet, but I plan on doing that just to see what's there, what how it works. But I'm going to skip that, press enter there. Now here we're going to try, it says try to install Lilo, the bootloader, automatically. Expert mode, so you can do it yourself, or you can skip it all together if you're using another bootloader. But we're going to use uh, standard. Here you got some other options frame buffer console, but we're going to use the safe choice, a standard. It says it's a little slower, but it works. <laughs> All right, so sometimes uh, it says that you'll need to enter a, a kernel parameter here, and we don't have any, so if, if you do, here's where you would enter them again. Press enter there. We are going to use the MBR installed a master boot record because it's a BIOS boot. Okay. It's installing the bootloader. Uh, this is uh, allows you to copy and paste it startup. We're going to say yes, start that program. Would I like to configure your network? Yes. Enter a host name. So let's go Slack 15. All right. Okay. Enter a domain name, none. Uh, yeah, it won't let you bypass this, so you have to come up with either a real name or like what I just did. All right, uh, we do we not do not require VLAN ID, so I'm gonna select no. We are going to auto configure the network using Network Manager. You do have some other. You can enter your IPv6 and 4 address if you want to configure a static IP or the DHCP. All right, but we're going to use auto configuration. Uh, does that look correct? It does. Settings accepted. Basic configuration. All right, so this is all of uh, your startup items that's going to start up when you turn your machine on. In this VM, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to turn on two, but I'll go through this a little bit slower so you can see down at the bottom of the screen how the definition changes. I'll give it about five seconds. Now, cups here, you would definitely want that probably if you was going to be running this as a daily work machine and you had to print sometimes when I set this up on real hardware I selected quite a few of these but in here I'm will I'm only gonna select a couple and you'll see I think it's one uh nope not this one it's easier to pause and see what, what the definition is if I go slow all right right here network time server I'm gonna space bar and that puts a asterisk in that category and i think we're getting pretty close card bus services that sounds like something you'd need here samba if you want to print server with windows system log and that's it so when you get through selecting all your or deselecting either way all your startup items that you want to load up at boot, press OK. Would I like to try out some new custom fonts? Uh, not really. I, I'm t always tempted to <laughs> try that just to see what it'll do. Hardware clock set to local time. In my case, we are in the U.S. Central. I'm going to slide down one with the arrow key and select Vim, 
rather than NVI or Elvis. Okay, now what do I want to start up? The XFCE desktop, which is what I selected by default. And you'll notice KDE is not even in this list. So I'm going to select or highlight the cholesterol free desktop environment and press OK. Uh, there's no password set for the root administrator, so we're going to say yes. And retype it. Press enter to confirm. Setup is now complete. So we'll arrow down to exit and press enter. Please remove the disk, and I think we'll find it's already gone. It is. Press OK. And let's just reboot. If you're doing it with a USB, it probably wouldn't remove that. You probably would have to power off or just pull it out when your system powered off to reboot. I probably should get out of scale the mode here. Let me get small for a minute, but we'll adjust the resolution. Okay. But we do not have a user. I'm gonna go back in scaled mode. Uh, we were we was not as far as I thought we were. So the only thing I can do is log in as root. Okay, give it my password. All right. So we definitely need to add a user, and I, I think it's add <laughs> user. Yes, and it's asking for uh, your name. Yes, user ID. We'll use the next available initial group now here if you press enter or i'm sorry here you could go ahead and add some groups if you wanted to what i like to do is press enter read this and it tells you to use the up arrow key and it'll bring in a lot of common groups so now we would be in audio cd rom floppy input lp net dev plug dev power scanner and video and i'm gonna go space and we're gonna go we uh oh <laughs> wheel and I believe there's one called disk and games press enter home directory is home Dennis that is correct shell has been bashed that is correct there is no expiry date and press enter if we're good with those and we are it's creating that account now this is the name that you would want to see if in an office situation or a networking situation but I'm just going to press enter here because I don't need a name or office or a phone number or home phone. But I do need a password. All right. Account set up. So what we're going to do here is hit control D or we could go type exit. All right. Now we're going to log in as our user. And if we did all that correct, there we go. So now we can say safely say start x and this will start our xfce desktop i'm going to control c to get out of scaled mode at this point and i'm sure this video is going to run long so i'm going to as soon as we get into here and you see it's an operating system and how it works we'll i'll probably stop this video and then do a comparison video for the next one over there uh, settings, display. Don't have a 16 by 9, 1440 by 900 to work for now. Keep it close. And we do have the guest editions. See my mouse going in and out of there. And so this is the XFCE desktop uh, default. All the stuff that they want to put in is in, uh, and that's it. So the rest of it's going to be up to you to uh, manipulate or configure. But let's just look right here under accessories. We got these things here, development, bunch of stuff here, education, one, games, three games, graphics, uh, six programs, internet, I don't know, 10, but Firefox, multimedia. I mean, it's pretty fair. You got some stuff and you could work with just what's here, print settings. Uh, but you're probably going to want to add some other stuff. Now, remember, all I did was I, I did not install the KDE desktop. 
All right, so let me slide this over a little bit here. Bring in a terminal. Now, you've seen the way I had to start up. Let's just reboot. And then well, you'll know, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And it should remember the resolution. Press enter instead of waiting two minutes. Yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have to break this into part one and part two. But we'll get this, we'll get this one going. And then I'll stop the video and then we'll compare this one compared to the other one. Okay, again, I'm going to log in. And I'm going to issue this command, start. X. Now that don't bother me doing it that way. It's kind of neat doing it that way, but most people are not going to want to do that more than likely. So I'm going to show you how to stop that or adjust that. So we're going to have to sign in as root, give it our password. Now, whoops. Okay, so now we can say sudo. No, we don't need sudo. Now we can say nano, etsy, init, if it'll tab complete. Nope. Yep. All right, so we're going to go down here where it says default run levels. And we're going to find the first one there. It says ID3. We're going to go over and backspace that out, replace it with the four. Control O to, to write it out. Enter to confirm. Control X to get out of here. I'm going to control D to just close that out. Drag it us over a little bit. And let's put it to the test. Restart. Bring my notes up while that's doing. Here's all the links that we just went through briefly. I'll make sure those get listed. Uh, we created a user already. Uh, we put him in groups. The graphical login, this is where you go, Etsy init tab. Change the run default level. That's def By default, it's three. Change that to four. That's where we're at here. Close this out. See where we're at up here. Waiting for me to press enter or going to count down two minutes. Yeah, I installed this on real hardware, and I've, I've really been enjoying playing around in it, learning a little bit. All right, so we should skip past this. I'll type in my name, give it my password, and that's SDDM, by the way. And that's how you get it to log in graphically. Okay, now before you do anything, you're going to have to select your mirrors. I'm going to have to sign in as root again. I don't have to. I could change that, and I might do it. So we're going to use Nano again and go in Etsy, Slack, if it'll tab. Nope, oh, yep, Slack, PKG. And then mirrors. Yep. And they warn you only select one, and trust me, it will only work if you select one. You'll keep getting errors. So this is Slackware stable. That your first mirror list is going to be the stable. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of that com comment right there hashtag. But I'll show you here if we scroll on down. Like I said, this is all the the stable stuff, stable merit repos. But if you do scroll down, you'll get down to where it says Slackware current. So if you want to run the newest, uh, all the newest stuff when it comes out, this is where you would go to select your mirror. So I've already selected mine. I'm going to go Control O to write it out, Enter to confirm, Control X to get out of there. So now we're going to say Slack E. KG install GPG, I think that's right. Update. 
<laughs> Slack package. I knew it didn't sound right. Update GPG. Now you have to do this before you can do any any work downloading from either updates or even doing in, uh, package installs. Uh, do I want to import the key? Yes. Usually does that by uh, on its own. Slack PKG update. Now this will sync the mirrors. And that's using Slack package to update your mirrors. And it running the stable, you could do this probably once a week, but I, I do it. I've been doing it on my other system every other day. And I haven't run into any problems. Okay, so now let's just say we want to install something. So Slack PKG install. And I'm going to pick a package I know is not available. Just to show you, let's see, it says no package installed. But if you want to do a search, just type search instead of install. And no package found. Okay. So that's this system. That's with just XFCE. Now you do get quite a bit of stuff. But I didn't, it was because I didn't take it out when we were doing like the editor, Joe, Joe's editor, Emacs and all that stuff. If you remember, I don't know, yeah, we was able to, when we selected just XFCE, we could have took those things out. All right. I'm going to shut down. And I'm going to come back when I start up my next machine. The one I've already installed. Actually, let's start it up. We'll include a comparison real quick. In this video, I'm gonna press enter because I did not want to wait two minutes. <laughs> and this one I have not uh, configured the init tab, so it's gonna we're gonna have to start X. Which, like I said, I I actually like that. I, I was I wasn't sure that I would give it a second to make sure I'm not. Nope. I did change that. I'm glad I waited. <laughs> All right. Now, also here, you see down at the bottom, you could select, it says desktop section XFCE session. But if I left click on that, you'll see you got Plasma installed as well. But I'm going to keep it on the XFCE session and log in. Now, even though it's XFCE, as you'll fix in the C, I've already customized this a little bit. I've got the whisker menu installed. I got no background, <laughs> although they do have backgrounds. And I've got some programs installed, the ones that are available. Audacity, I had to use SBO package. And this is SBO package right here. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it to sync, even though it's kind of a waste of time just for this demonstration. But I'm going to show you how to, how to get this. Open up my web browser. So it's syncing the databases, repositories, mirrors, everything that's on the system and installed and not. So it's complete, say okay. Uh, while I'm waiting on the web browser, you can see the change, oops. I knew that was gonna happen. So if we go right here and just go S-B-O-P-K-G. That took me straight to Slack, uh, S-B-O-P-K-G.org, org. <laughs> so this is about, says S-B-O, Package is a command line and dialogue-based tool to synchronize Slack builds. Okay, so the latest release, we go to downloads, the latest release, click here, and it's going to try to download it, but it, you see it's a SBO, it's a WSRTK, 
PGZ file. We'll cancel off of that. Close out of here. Should be able to go to my file manager. Look in downloads. And here it is right there. So I would open up a terminal here. Let me just close out of SBO. We'll come right back to that. So I'd open up a terminal if you can here and sign in as root or super user. And now we're going to CD into our downloads folder. Now here we would go install. PKG, and we should be able to type in SB, and it should tab complete. And, and if you had other ones in here, like that G slap up there that you see that I have not installed, let's see, G, S, tab. See, that would install. So you just press enter right here, and it'll go through and install SBO package for you, or any other package that you've downloaded in this TXZ or TGZ format. We'll get out of here. Maybe if I just close it. <laughs> so that's how you would download and install SBO package. So let me get back in as root. SBO tab complete. There we go. And we're back at the SBO package. Now, one of the great things I found about this utility here, you can do updates, browse. You can, they've got a, a complete repository that you can browse with categories here, which is excellent, especially when you're looking for uh, libraries or codecs or uh, library. Yeah, libraries. Search the active repository. So let's just search for OBS hyphen studio. All right, so here it is there. So if we just say OK. We can view the README file. Right here requires FAAC, Luajit, RTMP dump, X264, Jack, L Lib, FDK, hyphen AAC, and Embed TLS. This project is a rewrite of the formerly known as Open Broadcaster Software. All right, so you get your dependencies there. You can look at the build file. And it'll also tell you what your dependencies are here. You can view the Slack build file. And I believe you could change it if you needed to. Choose more files, custom, remove, options. Once you got all the, for me, I found it was easier to find what uh, dependencies I needed install those and then try to install but once you get to the point where you're ready to download and install obs studio in this example process and press ok but i'm gonna go back to the main menu and that's how uh, sbo pkg works very nice very easy uh, i found a lot of packages in there that i was not able to get through the repositories let's see what would they have I don't have listed here. Let's see. Games. That's what we was going to show. Look at this menu, how full the stuff is under accessories. I mean, look. <laughs> Took five scrolls, four scrolls to get down through that list. Under development, again, three, four scrolls to get through it. Education. <laughs> Same thing. Just games, just galore. Remember, games in the XFCE without KDE only had three games. Graphics. So even though we're not working as in a KDE environment, we do have those programs available and running. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of stuff. And like that's what I was saying a while ago, you may not need anything to put this system to work because it comes with a lot of stuff if you allow it to. You don't have to select all that. You can. In that package set, you could take some of this out, quite a bit of it. Under the system, let's see. We got Gparted and KDE part Partition Magic <laughs> Manager. On the XFC, you get, do get Gparted, but not KDE. 
Let's see what we're running in a virtual box here. After I've done all that other stuff, it's still only running 507 megs of RAM. That's pretty pretty nice. I tell you, I, I've been having a good time. I'm going to have to shut this video off. It's running long. I will do another one covering some more the customizations that you can and can't make. The going over the Slack package, you see I got a bunch of notes. I, I'll show all the programs that I found readily and installed. Most importantly, I'll do part two on real hardware. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace out, guys. Bye.